Hi, my name is Harlan. Welcome to the H. Machukon Mechanical Engineering Channel. Today, I will discuss the first part of vibration analysis, a predictive maintenance tool for condition monitoring. Vibration is an important indicator of the mechanical integrity of rotating equipment. Vibration within rotating equipment tells us a great deal about the condition of that equipment. There are seven machinery defects detected through vibration signal processing. The first one is misalignment. Second one is unbalance. The third one is bent shaft. The fourth one is mechanical looseness. And under mechanical looseness, we have soft foot. We have uh, structural looseness. And we also have wear or loose fitting. Soft foot is a condition wherein the legs of the machine are not of the same plane. Usually, the acceptable uh, error is uh, three mils, and uh, two mils is considered excellent. Structure looseness is a situation wherein the mounting or the base of a certain rotating equipment is very flimsy. Wear or loose fitting. Over time, the bearings may get loose with respect to the housing bore, then uh, that would be wear or loose fitting and also the bushings may be loose compared to the shaft resulting from wear over uh, months of operation or hours of operation then that needs to be replaced electrical problems can also be detected through vibration signal processing and also you have the bearing defects and also the gear defects Vibration signal processing methods. We have six. The first one is the time waveform analysis, and the second one is the fast Fourier transform analysis or the FFT analysis, and the third one is a phase analysis. And we have the envelope detection, and now we have acoustic emissions analysis, and we have the high frequency detection. Let's start first with a time waveform analysis. So there are three parameters that define a vibration signal. We have number one, amplitude. The second is uh, frequency. And the third one is phase. So uh, the three parameters, we have amplitude, frequency, and phase. Amplitude is the size of the vibration signal. It is uh, it is uh, the severity of the fault. So the higher the amplitude, the higher the vibration, the greater is uh, the problem. Amplitude is always relative to the vibration level of a good machine. Frequency is the number of times an event occurs in a given time frame. The event is one vibration cycle. And the frequency at which vibration occurs uh, indicates the type of fault. There are certain types of fault typically occur at certain uh, frequencies. Phase measures the angular difference between a known mark on the rotating shaft and the shaft's vibration signal. The relationship provides valuable information on uh, amplitude levels, shaft orbit, and uh, shaft positioning. It is very useful for balancing and vibration analysis. So we have here a, the time domain vibration signal representation. You have time as the abscissa. You have uh, velocity as a function of time as your ordinate. And uh, you have here the vibration signal, uh, the red curve. And it is expressed as in this relationship. V is equal to V sub n sine omega t. Okay? Uh, where uh, V sub M is the amplitude and omega is the natural circular frequency and T is the time. So we, and uh, capital T here is the 
a time period which is the reciprocal of frequency. Positioning the vibration measurement sensor. Select the best measurement point on the machine. Avoid painted surfaces, unloaded bearing zones, structural gaps, and also housing splits. And when measuring vibration with a handheld sensor, it is important that you perform consistent readings by paying close attention to number one, the sensor's position, and the sensor's angle, and then the third is contact pressure. Overall vibration measurement methods. You have three. The first one is displacement, the second one is velocity, the third one is acceleration. Displacement is a change in distance or position uh, with uh, relative to a reference. The magnitude of uh, displacement is measured as amplitude. There are two measurable derivatives of displacement. The first one is velocity. Uh, mathematically, velocity is the first derivative of displacement with respect to time. And velocity is the change in displacement as a function of time at which uh, it is a speed at which the distance is being traveled. Like for example, 0.15 inch per second. And acceleration is a rate of change in velocity. Mathematically, it is the second derivative of displacement. And uh, with respect to time, for instance, 0.85 inch per second squared. Thus, vibration has three measurable characteristics. You have displacement, you have velocity, and acceleration. And although these three characteristics are uh, related uh, mathematically, these are three different characteristics. When possible, vibration should be measured in three um, directions. The first one is the axial di direction, and the horizontal direction, and the vertical. So I have here a drawing of a machine. It is a pump driven by an electric motor. And you have here the pump motor having the bearings, and you have the drive end and the non-drive end here. And for each bearing position, for the drive end, for instance, you have to measure the vertical uh, and the axial and the horizontal. So you measure the vibrations in these three positions, vertical, horizontal, and axial, which is parallel to the shaft. Same is true with a non-drive drive end. Horizontal measurements typically show uh, the most vibration because the machine is more flexible in the horizontal position. Uh, vertical measurements typically show uh, higher readings than uh, the horizontal because of stiffness due to mounting and gravity. The weight of the rotor itself uh, reduces the vibration signal, which is uh, a result of your reading. Furthermore, and balance, which is a very common machinery problem, produces radial vibration in the uh, vertical and horizontal components. And the machine is more flexible in the horizontal plane, right? So excessive horizontal vibration to compare to the um, vertical vibration is a good indicator of and balance. Axial measurements typically show less vibration readings. However, for uh, forces uh, caused by misalignment and bench shaft, these, are, uh, these problems create vibration on the axial plane. Equipment that is mounted vertically or overhang will have uh, different responses. Vibration readings taken in the three positions axial, horizontal, and vertical can uh, provide an insight as to what may be causing the problem. Location. Measurements should be taken as close as possible to the bearings and choose a flat surface to press the sensor tape against. And measurements should be taken at the same precise location uh, for comparison. 
To ensure consistency in the location of the probe, drill the measurement point with a shallow conical hole. Magnetic mounts are even better for consistency and uh, permanently mounted sensors are the best option always. Angle, always perpendicular to the surface. Pressure, consistent firm hand pressure is needed but it should not be too strong because it may hamper or dampen the vibration signal. Optimum measurement conditions. Measurement uh, should be performed with the machine operating at uh, normal operating conditions. That is the operating parameters such as temperature, flow, pressure, and load output are in its uh, normal operating uh, readings. Our machines, on machines with varying speeds or loads, you perform the measurements at extreme rating conditions like the maximum load and the minimum load and these uh, limits. And also, aside from the selected conditions that uh, occur within these limits. Comparing the most recent overall reading against the previous readings are the same measurement on the same measurement are the most efficient and reliable method of evaluating vibration severity. This will allow us to see how the measurements have changed over time and it would be easier to compare uh, the readings when you plot it in a trend plot. A trend plot is a line graph that displays the current and the past readings uh, values which are plotted over time. The past values should include a baseline, which is a known good reading. And the subsequent measurements are compared to the baseline uh, to determine uh, machinery changes. Like uh, usually when we have projects being implement, implemented involving rotating equipment installation, we always take vibration readings before we turn over the machine to operations. And we will compare those readings with the ISO standards and when it falls within the standards, then uh, we will con see, uh, consider the baseline and we will record it before we turn over the machine to operations. And uh, from there, we can develop machine history. Comparing a machine to itself over time is the much preferred detection for machinery problems uh, as each machine is unique in its operation. ISO standards are good for a start until you develop uh, machine history. So ISO standards define good and not good conditions for various wide range machinery classifications, which we will discuss in a, a, for, in a, a the succeeding uh, video tutorials. Each machine is manufactured differently and is installed differently like say they have uh, different foundation specifications and design and they're operated under different conditions, different loadings, different speeds, different uh, environment, corrosive or not corrosive, hazardous or non-hazardous or 24-hour uh, service and they are also maintained differently. Stay tuned for the second part of vibration analysis in the next video tutorial. Thank you for watching.